welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast. It is time for the conference championship games. We got the AFC and the NFC versions of the games, as we'll find out on Monday morning who will be playing in Super Bowl 56 in Arizona. Now, our first game is the first game you guys are going to see on TV. So it's 3 o'clock Eastern, and it's going to be 8 p.m. if you're a UK or Irish watcher of the NFL. And it's the NFC version. So it's the San Francisco 49ers, the second seed, traveling to the number one seed, the Philadelphia Eagles. And with me, I've got two guests who are going to preview their team's game. First of all, a returning guest. He's been on for the whole playoff round so far back with me 40 Islanders fan Paul Hope thanks for having me Andy I've got a new greeting for you because okay I think the dirty oh. one may have been overused and the Eagles fan might like this one so how about them Niners <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do actually fear you've, you've jinxed it now because you know the run was going on when he said you know, feeding pretty good um you know I, I I do fear for you that you know that could Come back to bite you on, on, on Sunday night. No, nah, I'll get a few of them in during the... It was just last week's um, guest was a Cowboys fan and he was very, very bullish. But to be fair to him, he was one of the first people to reach out and send me a congratulations message. So I just want to say thank you. It was much appreciated and it was all in good banter. And I'm hoping for the same tonight, to be honest with you, Andy. Yeah, I mean, that was obviously that was Scott from last week. You know, he is he's a great lad. He's um, you know, he, he's been very nice on Messenger to me as well. And just to clarify, you know, when we lost to the Bills, um, I was messaging all my Bills fans mates who um to let them know well done for the win. So um, I hope I can give off the same vibe. Um, our other guest uh, for the Eagles side is a first time guest on the podcast. We have with us today Eagles fan Cam McFarlane. How are you? Not bad at all. Thank you for having me. It's it's fun to be here. We're down at the business end now of, of the season. Um, yeah, I like that little little reach out there, little cowboy shout. I'm I'm having that. I'm not sure whether I enjoyed more the fact that you got to beat them or whether we could have done that this week would have been more fun. I'm not sure, but it's yeah, I think it's one of those. And if we're gonna have a little play on words, I think playing against us hurts and I think it's gonna hurt on Saturday uh, on Sunday <laughs> night for you boys. I want to get the um. I can't think of the name. The guy who sings it, but you know the song. Is it hurts so good? I, I can see that has to be the ha- if they win a Super Bowl, that has to be the the title of the article. It really does because especially if he's Super Bowl MVP, if you get there, that is um. You know, I think it's um a headline waiting to happen. I think um you could obviously flip that and go everybody hurts if you do lose either this week or next week. So um yeah, so I think some good puns are coming their way. Whatever happens to the Eagles, come the rest of the uh season. Um, so back to you, Cam. We'd like to ask all of our new guests the same sort of question. But for you, an Eagles fan, what made you support the Philadelphia Eagles? A um, bit of a funny one, really. So it's going back probably, how old was I? About 10 at the time. And bear in mind, this shirt still fits me, which either says I haven't grown very much or my dad bought me a shirt that was far too big. But he was in the US on business um, back in back in 2000. And... Um, he wanted to bring me back something like American based sort of sports. So I was always a big sports fan. And he went with the two guys he was working over there with, who were two American guys that he went over there to meet on business. And they were um, saying, Yeah, we'll get, get him an NFL shirt. And they were like, Get him a Patriots shirt, get him this shirt, get him a Broncos shirt. And he was like, No, I really like the green of the Eagles. So he brought me that back. And they were all laughing at him. Thought it was ridiculous to buy the Eagles shirt. And there's, there's been a lot of pain since then. But that was what got me into it and just loved them ever since and never never stopped watching them. And in terms of your time, you know, watching the Eagles, who would you say has been your sort of favourite player, past or present, uh, since being a fan? Uh, it's It's got to be past. And it's one that I tweeted out the other day that I was um, watching the miracle in the Netherlands where he returned the punt against the Giants in the build-up to last week's game. It's always been D Jax. It was always the one for me. Deshaun Jackson was just just electric to watch. It, between him and Shady, I mean Shady was always up there as well, but but just edging it was always Deshaun. So not someone like Nick Foles, for example? I mean, we all love ourselves some Nick Foles. Um I don't know sort of whether I can can I say his nickname on here or not? Yeah, go for it. Fine. Oh, oh. Big big dick Nick. <laughs> We well, he certainly was in that game, that whole run. He was he was amazing, wasn't he? He had the he had the ball, certainly. 
Yeah, that was it. They weren't deflated like Tom's were. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a Dolphins fan, I, I I love that joke. That's that's a joke I always I always like to hear. So um, already within what's it five minutes of the podcast starting, you've already in my already in my good books for um any chance to criticize the Patriots. It's um it's a good start to the pod. Um, so of course the game is going to be obviously I said before uh, eight o'clock in the UK. Um, this one, I think, out of the two, I'm finding for myself, it's the hardest to predict. I think these two teams are so evenly matched in many areas. You know, it, it is just a, a fantastic game we've got ahead of us, and I'm really excited to see it. I'm glad it's actually the first one because, you know, when you, when you watch a game half asleep, it's never quite as enjoyable. So I'm, not, I'm glad this is the only one because I can actually fully watch it and fully just take in what's going on. Um, we'll go back to you, Paul, on this. Actually, we'll go back to you first, Cam. Um Thoughts on the season overall, because you know it's the team that last year was set for a rebuild, and in two years has been under Nick Sirianni. You've had a a playoff appearance, albeit you were humbled by the Buccaneers, and then a year later in the NFC Championship game. Um, what's your thoughts been on what's been a what a great year for the Eagles? It has. It's been a fantastic season, and I did fancy us to make a bit of a leap from from sort of year one to year two with with Hertz and Sirianni, but I don't think any of us really saw it being being this good throughout the season and yeah we've had a little bit of a, a shaky end to the season but we were without Jalen for a couple of weeks and I think it was kind of wrapped up then other than other than sort of getting over the line in the final game just to to confirm number one but we always we knew at that point that we were comfortable and obviously a bit of Minshew mania we all love a bit of Minshew mania as well just to get just to give us a bit of excitement at the end of the season and then yeah it's been a really strong season I mean it, the leap's been been pretty incredible from from year one to year two, and I just we don't really have any weaknesses, which is just we've obviously done our thing in free agency, where how he's done his thing and got in the right sort of guys again, big signings as well down the stretch, bringing in Sue and Limbal Joseph, and just strengthening up that line that we already know how good our offensive line is anyway, uh, our defensive line is anyway, and just to bring those guys in. It's just given us another another little edge and just strengthened up the run defense, which is probably where we were struggling before that point. Yes, yeah, certainly. I have to give kudos actually to Steve McGuinness, a member of the podcast I I've been a part of before on the Hair Dry Treatment Podcast. He came on as an Eagles fan for our Eagles season preview episode, and in that we asked the as well as that he came on for our actual at the general league season prediction episode and his Super Bowl matchup. Was the Bills? Obviously, that was wrong. But his NFC team was the Eagles. So, um, fair play to him. I mean, I, I, I laughed him at the time. But, you know, right now, he's 60 minutes away in a, in a game from from being right. So, um, yeah, I think fair play. i got to shout out Steve there. It's, um, you know, that's that's a good a good prediction. At least one of them was. Um, now, Pam, you mentioned um, weaknesses. Now, Paul, as a 49ers fan, I mean, you've made the feeling pretty good joke a lot on this podcast and since the playoffs started, but you mentioned weaknesses. I've got, I've got to say, as an outsider watching in, Brock Purdy, I don't, he hasn't been quite the player we saw in the regular season. I mean, he was a bit nervous, I think, in that sequence game, especially the first half. And despite no picks against the Cowboys in the last round, you know, and 214 yards, he also didn't throw a touchdown. And albeit he did throw that catch to George Kittle, who obviously made one of the best catches I've seen of the whole entire season. Does, I admit I did actually ask his last week, so apologies, listeners. But does that concern you at all? The fact that he isn't maybe lighting up as much as maybe he was in the you know the final five weeks. I mean, first of all, I was on with a Cowboys fan last week, so obviously the Cowboys were very bullish. But as 49er fans, we knew we had the better team. Now it's been unique this week for the first time since we played the Chiefs. The 49ers are the underdogs. So first of all, I'll kudos to the Philadelphia Eagles. You're not going to get me come on the show and say, oh, they've got a weak schedule. They shouldn't be where they are. They're the number one seed. They've earned the number one seed. They've been very impressive. I did chuckle when you said no weaknesses. I may have something to say about that in a moment. But with regards to Brock Purdy, Andy, and we'll say it time and time again, we don't need Brock Purdy to be Superman. We don't need him to be Patrick Mahomes. We don't need him to be Jalen Hurts. What we need him to do is be brilliant like he is. In the system we've got, don't turn the ball over. That was Jimmy's biggest problem with the turnovers. Brock, yes, he got away with a couple against the Dallas Cowboys, but most quarterbacks in the NFL that take a chance. 
get away with them. He just needs to keep those very safe, short to mid-range passes and let the Yak boys do their damage. We've said before, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Now, a lot of Cowboy fans scoffed at that George Kittle play. It was still a bloody good play. And I know he bobbled it up and around, but it changed the trajectory of the game. Robbie Gold outscored the Dallas Cowboys last week. Robbie Gould scored 13 of our points. The Cowboys only scored 12. We didn't need Brock to throw touchdowns. He's kept them for this week. You know what it's like in the playoffs. You get the playoff football, but you forget he's a rookie. Everybody's expecting him to turn into mystery relevance. But here we are, the NFC Championship game, feeling very confident. Now, I will admit... Hurts is the better quarterback. I'm not going to say he's not. He's got the better experience. He's got that mobility, which tends to shoot us in the foot, which I'm sure we'll get on to about. And I know Cam's probably smiling, thinking Jalen Hurts is back. But for me, Mr. Mr. Purdy, I still feel Purdy damn good, Andy. I was always <laughs> going to get it in there to keep my superstition. He's been everything and more that we advertised, and I'm not worried at all. Big test for him, going into, obviously, Philadelphia. Play of football, law. You're allowed to be excited. I'm allowed to come on this show as a 49ers fan and be excited that my team's back in the NFC Championship for the second year in a row. And we're feeling more confident because in our eyes, we've upgraded at quarterback. Yeah, and I think that it's um, it's amazing what a difference a year makes because he a fast forward, we're winding, sorry, a year ago. And, you know, it was seen as the Rams being the favourites and, you know, probably the whole the playoff round you had last year, you know, you were probably the underdogs in all those games. And I think that, it's a great achievement by Shanahan and to give Purdy some credit, the fact that, you know, it is, you know, a game where, you know, you're not underdogs, but you're not favourites. You saw it, it, people think that you could actually win this. So it's, um you know, it's it's a really interesting game. Um, You mentioned, actually mentioned Purdy. He is actually been up for an award. So he is actually one of three players up for Offensive Rookie of the Year, as well as Kenneth Walker from the Seahawks and Garrett Wilson from the New York Jets. Other Niners or Eagles people involved. So the coach of the year, both Shanahan and Sirianni are one of the five nominees, as well as Brian Dable, Doug Peterson. And I think I'm a bit surprised by this one in Sean McDermott. Um, I'd probably see he's there. Uh, Jaden Hurts is up for Offensive Player of the Year. Nick Bosa is, I think, is a lock, but he's up for Defensive Player of the Year. McCaffrey's up for Comeback Player of the Year, as well as Saquon Barkley and Geno Smith. And then MVP there is Burrow, there is Mahomes, Allen and Jefferson, but there is also Jaden Hurts. So out of those, I mean, MVP, I think, is a bit more of a toss-up. But I think I, I think McCaffrey is, for me, my favourite for comeback player of the year. I think that Nick Bosa is my favourite for, you know, defensive player. I think it's an absolute lock. But in terms of Brock Purdy, an offensive rookie of the year, I mean, would you have him over Wilson or Walker? Or would you... Would you say, Paul, that maybe it is someone else or, or do you think Purdy is the guy to win that? Depends on which way you look at it. Obviously, as a 49ers fan, you're delighted to see the impact. You've got to remember, he, he came into that game against Miami as the third choice quarterback. As Mr. You mentioned that game again. <laughs> I, I, I know, Andy. It's both, oh, he's breaking I, my heart here in this game. Every game, every that's, time. <laughs> that's where the journey started, though, when he came on the yeah. field. All of us sat at home were like, oh, just get just get through this game. I, I chalked it off as a loss at that point because Purdy didn't exactly light it up at training camp. Now, obviously, the fact that he's gone up against the number one defence in the league for 13 weeks prior to that had obviously got him something to do and the fact that we've got a solid run game. And he looked shaky against Miami. I remember doing the podcasts after the Miami game and criticising the fact that he seemed to be like a college quarterback. He wanted to just run around as soon as there was pressure. And there's one player that I love. He went to escape the pocket and there was two Dolphins defensive ends either side of him. And I thought, oh God, this isn't going to end well. And after that, he seems to have worked through the pocket more and he only tends to run when he needs to. And I think he's realised, hang on, this isn't college. This is the NFL. They are athletes on both sides of the ball. So for me, Kenneth Walker's had a good season. The guy at the Jets has had a good season. But we're in the NFC Championship game and we're actually sat here talking like we've got a chance. Now, I'm not saying we're favourites. We are the underdogs with, with the number two seed going up against the number one seed. But when you look on the impact of the season, I think it's fair to say Purdy deserves to be mentioned there. And if he'd started earlier, maybe he might be a lock-in. But I may be biased. Who knows? No, I think you make a good point. I think I think Gout Wilson had it. I'd be surprised if he won it, to be honest. And I think it is one of Purdy and Kenneth Walker for me. Um, and I think that 
you know, defensive rookie of the year, Source Gardner, Aidan Hutchinson, Tariq Woolen. I do think that Source Gardner again is for me my pick, and I think he is probably a lot of people's pick. Um, no point in mentioning defensive player of the year. I think it'd be absolutely ludicrous if it's not Nick Bosa. But MVP uh, over to you, Cam. Um, MVP, I'll go back, go back to this again. Um, so obviously it's him, Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, and Jefferson. I personally give it to Mahomes if I was picking it. But where where do you stand on MVP? Would you would you give Hurt the title, or was there anyone else you maybe out of those five you would say maybe deserves it more? I think he's right in there, and he's got to be with where he's taken us this year and the impact he's had. But I think in the teams that they play in, I actually think that Burrow has a bigger influence on on Cincinnati and the season he's had to take them. I think he's probably, I would I would probably pick him above Jalen. Um, Alan flatters to deceive at times, I think, when it comes to the crunch. I think we don't see him perform the way he should do. I, I, he's not in the conversation for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think I'm leaning towards Burrow, but then with, with Jalen, a very close second, but Going into this weekend, we'll we'll see because that could flip the other way if, if he puts on a dominant performance. And you, I think he's going to have to use his legs a lot. He's going to have to move around a lot, which we've seen this season can work against the Niners. And if he can do that effectively and and find the sort of the deep shots down the field, I think he could put in a a real strong performance, and it might just flip it in his favor going into that into the Super Bowl. But, I've just actually seen to, um, some breaking news from the NFL coming out of the Carolina Panthers who've announced their new head coach. Now, I don't know whether you boys have just seen, seen this. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's Frank Reich who is the new head coach of the... Which I think I think it's got potential to be good because you all saw, you know, I don't know what you boys seen, but when he first came in, he was excellent. Went from one and five to the playoffs. You know, went down downhill pretty quick and he obviously that collapse last season pretty much was the beginning of the end. But I think it can be good. They got a great defense, and Frank Reich is obviously a very good defensive coach, or has been in the past. And obviously, you will know yourself, um, Cameron, the fact that you know he was part of the the famous season where you won it all. So, of course, come, we have to come to you first. Um, of course, they're in your in your conference now. He's in your conference, but as someone who you know who who knows Frank Reich very well, how do you see this move coming off him? Do you think he can be a success in the Carolina? I think it was a little bit of a surprise for me. I saw it pop up just before just before we came on as well. And I I kind of thought I wasn't sure after the way it's gone over the last couple of years in India, I wasn't sure he would go straight back into a into a head coaching role. I kind of thought we might see him go back to being an offensive co- coordinator somewhere. But I think like you say, they've got a good side there. They've got a, a team that's got potential but seems to just be struggling and do we now see Carson Wentz to the Panthers? Is that what we, is that the next step for him now as well? Because of their famous relationship that didn't quite work in Indy when he they tried to reignite it. But obviously, I think he's going to be someone that's he's going to be available again this year with how it's gone um, in Washington this year. So could we see him back there and maybe be the the quarterback of the future in Carolina? Yeah, I didn't even think of that. I mean, Carson Wentz, I think. This season for me is, I think, showing that he, I think his time is done as a starter. And I think, whilst I think most teams probably wouldn't take him on, I think that with a team that, you know, with the, the worst by far quarterback room in the NFL, when you've got PJ Walker, uh, Sam Darnold, um, and Baker Mayfield for half of the season, I think Carlton Wentz could eat. And he's obviously, he's not going to be a starter for Washington next year. And I think that it could happen again. I really do think that. But um, I think time will tell. On that now, this game for me, I think there's a great plethora of receivers to throw to. You got AJ Brown, you got Devonta Smith, you got George Kittle, you've got Brandon Ayuk. I mean, I think this game offensively has got some really big stars involved in this game. And I just want to get your guys sorted on this because there's so many players. It's, it's always it's going to be one guy who stands out for the team that wins it. Now, I want to ask you both this. Uh, I'll go back to you, Paul, first. Out of your offensive weapons, whether it's Debo, CMC, Kittle, Ayoko, or someone else, who are you picking as the one guy who's going to make the decision? If, if you do win the game or, or at least keep it close, who's going to be the guy that's going to be the, 
the main source of output and going to be the the match winner for you if you had to pick one well i kept this answer back when you asked me about purdy as cameron's probably thinking i knew he was gone with this so when i've been doing my research on the eagles because admittedly i didn't watch a lot of them and superstitious wise i always wait till a wednesday night and focus on the new opponents now weirdly as much as the eagles defense have been great on the pass rush they've not been great against running the ball and that's what Carl shanahan loves so for me i'm expecting a huge game from cmc now I will give you my score later and it'll be reflected in how I think it'll be a great game for CMC. But equally, I think Mitchell might do a lot of the hard yards as well. And then CMC might get the ones where he punches it in. But I I have a feeling that we're going to be run heavy. And when I've looked at the Eagles against the Commanders, against the Cowboys, against some of the games that they lost, don't get me wrong, you've had a fantastic season. But like us, you've lost a couple of games. Those teams tended to run the ball, control the clock, time of possession, so you're sat here now, Andy Sinu, you've got all these wide receivers. For me, I'm petrified of AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. And the best way to go up against them is keep, keep them on the sideline. Don't let them on the field. I mean, Washington ran the ball 49 times against the uh, Eagles. Kyle Shanahan, that's his dream to run the ball 49, 50 times. So that, that's easy, sad at home, you know, as an Englishman who's not an NFL coach. And I'm sure the Eagles will be like, all these players out there were, were very confident. But I think CMC for me is the one. And then George Kittle, rookie QBs tend to default to the tight ends. George Kittle has come back into prominence. He's not just a blocker, Cameron, as we've seen over the last few weeks. He's been more involved in the past game. And I think people forget that Kittle is athletic and he's got that ability. So I think the two of them in tandem. But cheekily, I'd love to see a huge game from Debo. I just would love to see Debo put the team on his back. But I'm going to stick with CMC. Is that what you thought I was going to say, Cameron? With the CMC? Yeah, I thought you, I thought you might go there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to counter it slightly. Those games where we got run over a little bit. Jordan Davis was out. Big, big player for us. The rookie on on the defensive line, and I think we're not as easy to run over as as everyone thinks. But we will see because. You guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good at running the ball. So that does worry me a little bit. As much as I said we've got no weaknesses, I was being a little bit bullish to start us off. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be easy. I think it's going to be a slugfest. I think it's going to be a great game for the neutral. But I don't think it's going to be a great game where you're going to see a 55 41. I think you're going to see two top teams, two top defenses. And when I say easily run the ball, 4.6 yards per carry, it's not like CMC is going to be breaking free. Every yard is going to be earned. And equally, Andy, as much as I love Nick Bosa, you take Nick Bosa away from us, the sacks soon dwindle. And when I looked at the Eagles getting 70 sacks on the season and I was looking down the list of where all the sacks were, I was like, oh, this is what uh, a pass rush looks like then, aside of Nick Bosa. So I am slightly worried. The only saving grace I've got is the Eagles tended to feast on your traditional quarterback that drops deep or drops back. Purdy doesn't do that. There's a lot of run the ball. There's a lot of play action. There's a lot of boot. Even Dallas, I mean, we had, we had 33 minutes of possession against Dallas and their pass rush did get to Purdy. I think they sacked him twice, which in the grand scheme of things, one was a, a blown assignment and it didn't really make a difference. So I'd, I'd like to see Purdy the same, using his legs to escape, but ugh, it's going to be a hell of a game for the neutral. Our nerves might be shot and I'm sure by the end of it, me and Cameron might be exchanging messages because he did follow me on Twitter earlier before we came on, so I did appreciate that. But I'm not one of these people, Andy, who hate the other teams. I, I chuckle because I went to Manchester to watch the Patriots-Eagles Super Bowl, and I was cheering for the Eagles because I'm sick of seeing Tom Brady win the Super Bowl. So when you did the Philly special, we all lost our minds because we were like, oh, yeah. my God, that's amazing in the Super Bowl. So I've got a few friends that are Eagles fans. I like watching them play. I like Hurts as a quarterback. Equally, if we lose, I'll be the first to reach out and congratulate. There's no trash talking. I just think it's great that we've got number one and number two, how it should be. The two top teams in the NFC fighting it out for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I think we've got to the point where people like to talk, they like to write us off, and we always get written off, but we're Philly, and it's a Philly thing, and we don't care. Like, (laughs) say what you want about us, but we don't care. We don't care if you don't like us. But yeah, you can, you can talk about about all of that and everything else about the strength of schedule or anything else, but at the end of the day, we've both gone into the playoffs and the two of us are now the, the only ones still there. So that's always something because you've still got to go and win playoff games after after the rest of it. 
yeah, you mentioned the sights there as well for us. I think with that game shows, like you say, Ferdy can can get out and he can move. And that final game against the Giants, we're up against their third string quarterback. <laughs> out of nowhere, getting a start in in the NFL just because they were resting the starters, and somehow managed to avoid us all game, and we didn't get the two sacks we needed to break the Bears' all time record. Yeah, it, it's like you said, Andy. It, it's it, you know we, our defense is well vaunted. Obviously, we've gone about Nick Ball, so we have some weaknesses. Obviously, Cameron's going to be looking at uh, Lenar. He's going to be looking at his two wide receivers, but we face some pretty good receivers this year. And touch wood, one of your receivers will get 100 odd yards or get some chunk plays. But I'm very confident of us shutting the door. That said, this is our biggest test. The Eagles are very good in the red zone, which scares me with equal measure. I love AJ Brown. I loved him as a Titan. Um, got a friend who's a Titans fan, was absolutely devastated when they gave him away. Yeah, and he's been amazing at the Eagles. Devontae Smith has had the impact we all thought a first round would have. And like you said, both sides of the ball, you're very strong. So there was no way I was coming on this short tonight and be like, yeah, it's going to be a 55 to 10 win for yeah. the Niners. <laughs> my score reflection will reflect how I'm feeling, Andy. So when we get to that bit, you'll, you'll probably chuckle. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And I'm glad you actually mentioned Elijah Mitchell because he is someone that, you know, was so good for you last year. And then the injury came in obviously early on this season, but he's come back and played really well. And I'm I don't work for him to so just um to put that out of there, but since coming back on DraftKings, he's earned over thirty points in three in the three games he's back here. Five point one in the last game, okay, but ten point seven against Seattle and seventeen point five against um I can't think the Giant no whoever you played in week eighteen. It's um I think he's something that I think with McCaffrey if you're going to use him in multiple roles, whether it's in the pass game or in the run game, I think that Mitchell is off to be that guy they've gone to next. I think he could be a really secret secret weapon for you guys if you're going to win this game because they're going to be they're going to be you know, they're going to be planning for the you know the likes of Debo and Kittle and and Ayuk and McCaffrey. I don't think many they'll have probably less a plan less I think for Elijah Mitchell. So I think on the offensive offens- offensive side of things, I think that um terms of um he's only four point nine as well as for 4,900 on DraftKings. So I think he's, if you're listening and you play DraftKings and you're picking a lineup, I think he is someone that absolutely you should pick on him. As well as I, I think I have only just over 5,000. So I think them two are people you have to look out for. Uh, back to you, Cam. Um, in terms of your offense, um, who's one player? Uh, I mean, we, we could mention defense, but that's sort of less sexy in the offense. So I think on offense, um, who's the one player you can see potentially like Paul mentioned with um, CMC, who's the one Eagles player on offense? You know, you've got Smith, AJ Brown, Miles Sanders, and the likes. Who's the one player you're picking to um, make a splash play or have an impact the most in this game for your offense? I think it's a tough one. I'm going to go a little bit left field with this, but I think AJ Brown will have the bulk of, of the receptions and it, it probably will go over 100 yards, but I think we're going to see a couple of big places. I think, just looking at it, I think we can, you can get at your corners a little bit and you can get at your deep. And especially if Jalen can use his legs and give himself enough time and give the receivers enough time to get deep, Quez Watkins could be a huge player in this game. He lost a bit of time to Zach Pascal last week. But I think with the deep threat and the, the option to get deep against your corners, his speed, I think we see him go for a... 60, 70 yard touchdown at some point in this game that that is a big turning point in the game. Interesting, interesting. I um Quez Watkins is an interesting player because on, on fantasy football he is often one of the most weird ones because he had one week where he get those points, then next week maybe not as much. So I think I think yeah, I, I think since the unsung heroes, I think you know you could look at him, you could look at someone like Boston Scott as well. I think he's someone that, you know, they want to rotate between him and Sandra. I think Boston Scott I think he got touched down last week against the um, Giants in that blowout, and I think that he is, um, you know, I think he's someone that you know, at shown when he when he's been on his game, he's actually been quite good. And looking at his stats from that game, only got thirty two yards, but he only got he got one touchdown, and his longest run was ten yards. So yeah, I think for me, Boston Scott is someone else I think could have a cheeky role in the game. But I think, um, you know, I think either way, I think the run game. I can see struggling from both teams. I think both teams are good against run, particularly the 49ers are very good against run. And I think it's going to be, I think, in terms of offensive points, I think it's going to come more from the passing game, I feel, than, than the run game. And I think that's what we're going to see a, 
a shootout, but also a defensive shootout as well. I think both teams are going to be excellent on defense, and I think that it's, you know, I think I think Paul's right. I do think it's going to be a um, you know, a low scoring game, but I think it's going to be end to end. I think both teams are going to have the ball. I can see it being a lot of potentially third and out, but a lot of big plays as well involved in that. So I think this game, I think for me, is going to be. Um, one hell of a game, but um, I do think the other game may be better to watch purely because it's probably more offensive, um, you know, led than maybe this game is. But we are going to head to a break, and when we come back, we're going to go for the final segment, which will give both Paul and Cam the chance to predict who they think is going to win and make it to Super Bowl 56. And we are back from our break. Um, just apologize to our listeners or viewers on YouTube. Um, is I said the wrong number, it's 57, not 56. But I'm sure if you're listening, you already know that was the case. Um, but we are going to head to the final segment of the episode, which is going to be our prediction part. So we're going to give both the fans their chance to predict who they think is going to win the game. And if they want to, they can give a score as well. And then I will weigh in with my prediction at the end as the neutral in this episode. So um, back to you, Cam. Who's going to win this game? I can't pick against my guys. I just there's just no way I'm picking against my guys. Not at home. Not with the noise that there's going to be in the link and the atmosphere. And I hope we come out to meet Mill again like we did last time round when we made it this far and just get the whole crowd going. I think the stadium will be full about three hours before. It's going to be noisy. It's going to be loud. And I think it's going to be tough for Brock in this first sort of time in this sort of environment which he's not really going to have faced anything like this. And I've been really impressed with him this year. And I think he absolutely, for me, is offensive rookie of the year. I would 100% have him. And he, he's just managed the game really well. He's looked almost like a, a veteran in there, the way he's carried himself. And like you say, he was a little bit skittish early, like every college quarterback is when they come in. But he's learned and he's grown and you, you can see that throughout the year. So I think he'll still have his moments. I think he'll do well. But I think our... Our line will get home at some point. Hassan Reddick's going to eat at some point. He's going to get there. And and Brandon Graham at some point is going to have a sack because Brandon Graham always has a sack in big games. He, it's just what he does. And I fired you that little gift before when you sent the 31 to me, Paul. I thought you get getting a bit of BG back there. Um, so I think, I think we might just get there when it matters. And I'm taking us to win it. I'm going to throw a score out as well just for a bit of fun. I think... We win this one 27 20. Ooh, okay. A little bit higher than maybe some people think, but. And if, if you do win the game, I've just been looking online at prices, right? So you could get, theoretically, you could get a, a, a trip to Arizona for a week for £410 return. Now, this goes to both of you. If you win on Sunday, does any part of you be tempted to, to purchase those tickets and just go to Arizona just to be around? I'd be tempted, but it's it's not going to happen this month. I'm in Dublin next weekend. I don't think I can throw Arizona in the weekend. <laughs> I won't get it off work for a start. Yeah. Um, it it would be nice. Uh, me and me and one of my good friends is a big NFL fan as well. We actually spent last year trying to plan this trip and saw it fly into Vegas, sort of a few days before have a couple of days in Vegas and then drive up to Arizona and then drive back and fly back out of Vegas as well because it worked out but it just didn't quite work for both of us we couldn't both get the time and get to do it but one year maybe but this year's not going to be the one unfortunately for me so I'll be watching it in Manchester um, and and I'm going to enjoy it from there and hopefully we'll still be there and we'll be bringing home that trophy. Yeah, I mean, I actually was seriously considering it, but then my graduation two days before um, the game, and you know, I've and I made pl- I've made plans then, so I think it's just. But I think one year I will do it. And actually, friends of the show, Luke Campbell from the Hair Dry Treatment, he actually is going to be in Arizona. As far as I'm aware, I don't think it's, anything's changed with that, but he's going to be in Arizona. He's flying first class as well, which um, and him his friend, I think they planned it for years there, just going around. And we had Brad Simcox, a Chiefs fan, on. Uh, last week and he got a free ticket through a competition at the Super Bowl p- event so Luke you never know, could be going to the game and he'll be you know I'll be speaking to him on the week of the Super Bowl getting his thoughts on his what the atmosphere is like hopefully and then yeah we'll get um 
get that hopefully some good content for you guys there. Uh, Paul, uh, before we give your prediction, if you do win this game, would you be tempted to go out to Arizona? We've looked, the 49 FF UK have looked, the flights aren't bad. It's mm-hmm. the accommodation kills you. Oh, yeah. And I forgot about to, that. To, to be honest, we've got a great relationship Cam, with the 49ers. And the last few games, we've had five people from our group at the game free of charge via the 49ers. But the cost of getting there, father of three, young family. The missus listens to this. She'll be watching this. She's like, you're not going to Arizona. I've told you. I mean, to be fair, I was in Glasgow last weekend with flag football. And then the Niners surprised us with a watch party in Leeds on Sunday. So I dropped the news that, you know, I was away last weekend. I'm going away this weekend as well. So I don't think it'd go down to, I'd love to go like Cam has said, but I do believe if the Niners get there, they'll, be a couple from the group who are more fortunate than me financially or be able to press the uh, the trigger. But I'm just thinking about this game at the moment. So not this year for me, Andy, no. I'm just looking now for anyone who's listening who is a fan of any of the four teams who are left in the thing. So I'm trying to find the best um, price of everybody. Obviously, ticking all the things like, you know, the Wi-Fi, you know, smoke alarm and all that. Um, let's have a look what the cheapest Airbnb you can find. On this is Superhost as well. Where's that option? So it's not looking bad at the moment. Let me just try and so if you want to go from the eighth to the fifteenth of February, you can actually get a place for three hundred and twenty-five dollars. So it's not actually that bad if you if you've got the time and money to do it. You could probably get a Airbnb and a flight for about seven hundred pounds. So um, yeah, if, if you're listening, uh-huh. you've, you've got time and money. Um, Certainly, I recommend it because, you know, that's, um, I, I think that's, you know, I don't think I'll go to Vegas or New Orleans because I don't really like either of those places. But I think when the next time it's on and not those places, I think definitely I want to give it a go. Or if someone wants to pay me to go out there, then I'm absolutely. Um, <laughs> Cheeky plug. Plug. Yeah. I, I was going to say, though, if, if, you're, if you're sending us, Andy, I'm happy to go and do the preview from there next week. <laughs> I'd, well, I'd love to. Like, if, if, um, you know, if, if I could, I would. And AA Sport, if you're listening, you had four people who've been on the podcast before, Ash, Dre, George and Sam. I'm available next year. If you want to add a, a fifth member to that to that uh, dynamic, you know, I'm here. <laughs> to be um, fair, I should have been in Vegas for the draft camp. So the Niners invited some of our group over, but I ruptured my Achilles. Ironically, oh. on the NFC Championship game last year, on the morning. So I don't remember much of the Rams game because I was heavily dosed on that. I can imagine. And then I was three weeks away from getting the boot off and the Niners invitation dropped. Do you want to come to the draft? We had to pay for our own flight, but to get there. So my good friend Lee Gowland announced the Sammy Womack pick and he was actually at the draft when Purdy was drafted. So that's an, another nugget. But I still remember begging the doctor, can I not go? Can I not go? He was like, mate, the medication you're on, the boot you're on. So it's a painful subject, Andy, because I've had options to go. And like you said, I probably could have gone out back end of the season, like as in the ticket was free, but it's the cost. And mm. I haven't made the journey yet, but it is it is on the bucket list and the good lady is on board. I'm just hoping that we play the Jags as the road team in London next year because that'll yeah. be the first time I get to see the Niners. But... Going back to the score prediction, it's as if Cam could see my notes because my score is very, very similar to yours. Just flipped the other way around for obvious reasons, like you, not backing against my team. Um, on the pod last week, Cam, the president of the 49 FAFL UK christened Brock as Brocky and he played the Rocky theme music and there was a big thing about okay. Brocky going into Philadelphia. I thought, oh, the Eagles fans won't like that. So I'm going with a Niners win. 27 to 24 with Robbie Gold kicking a last second field goal mm-hmm. to win the game. That's my ball prediction Ooh. for you there, Andy. So I think we just sneak over the over unders 46. So I think we just come under that. But I think we win 27 to 24. And I think it's going to be a game where it's back and forth and it's not settled till the last second. Yeah, I think that would be a great ending in terms of San Francisco. I mean, I've actually got my tickets fully booked now to go to San Francisco in September. So provided the schedule makers are, you know, with me, I will be going to a 49 game, no matter what the cost is, because I'm hoping this year I've got the chance this year to potentially tick off every stadium in the NFL I've been to. But, you know, it's um you know, it just depends on what the NFL gods and the NFL schedule gods have for us this year. Um so hopefully that will come good. Um now, in terms of my prediction, um, oh, I, I've been back and forth literally all week. I knew we were doing this podcast. And I knew obviously this part will come up. And I've been back and forth the entire week. Now, in terms of the score, 
I can see it actually potentially being a, maybe a 10-point game. I can see, oh, no, actually, what do I do? This is the height of preparation right here. I can't, um, right. I'm going to call it a a walk-off touchdown just to be just to be extra dramatic. It's going to be a walk-off touchdown. And it's going to be the, the final score is going to be 20 points to 13. And the person who's going to catch the winning touchdown, it's going to be Devonta Smith. The Eagles are going to win. And they're gonna make the way. I'm sorry, Paul. Um, <laughs> they're, they're gonna go. All the, I, th- I think the Eagles. I, I think that. Yeah, I do think that the Eagles. I think both teams have. I think I, I do actually think that winter's game might win the whole thing. I do think that both these teams are stronger than the Bengals and Chiefs, in my opinion. Um, in terms of all round, I think that offensive wise, I think those two teams may be better. But I think as an all round unit, I do think that. The, the Eagles and one well, are the are the best two teams in the league at the moment, and you know I would love this to be the game, but it's sadly not. But yeah, I just think I, I don't know. It, it, it's tough, and I think I've been I've been mentioned before. You know, Purdy's not been good. I know he didn't have to be the main guy, but I think that when it comes to this game, we saw it was Jimmy G last year, who's the same 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 the kind of quarterback in terms of not needing to be brilliant. I think Jaden Hurts and AJ Brown that connection is too strong, and I just think that in the end. The Eagles may well nick it and get the win. Um, but that is the end of this episode. So um, first of all, thank you, Cam, and thank you, Paul, for coming on. Yep, cheers for having me. Love love my first time on here. And I'm sure I'll be back next time for the Super Bowl prediction. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see on that one. I'm hoping to have multiple Eagles fans on. We've got quite a few friends of the pod who are Eagles fans. We've got the likes of Steve McGuinness, uh, Talk Sports Ollie Wilson, who was on last week. And hopefully we can have some sort of... We are planning to have a big bumper episode with fans of both teams involved. So, um, And also fans who aren't involved in the teams, um, we will have still have sound bites from friends of the show. So you'll both be, be on the podcast regardless. But question is, who's going to be on it? actually in person on the zoom call so um we will wait and see so hopefully all your listeners and re- viewers hope you will enjoy the game i've been andy this has been the across the board podcast this has been paul and cam and we will see you guys for our bengals and cheese episode next time <laughs>